it's always trippy when you think you know an artist back to front only to discover that there was something you didn't know about, something that shatters your perceptions forever and makes you realize that there was an entire phase of this band's history that you never even realized existed. I mean, who would have thought that Alice Cooper had been a weird garage psychedelic band before he hit it big with glam? Or that both Genesis and Yes started off as decent to average to not very good late 60s psychedelic rock bands. And I realize every example I just gave is from the 60s and 70s, but this is by no means something exclusive to that time. And in fact, the band we're going to look at today is from the 80s and 90s. And that band is, of course, White Zombie. Now, I know what a lot of my newer viewers are probably thinking right now. Those of you who've been with me since the early days will know that my musical tastes were pretty different back then. And while I don't listen to White Zombie very much anymore, I still stand by the statement I made a couple years ago that Los Exorcisto is a fantastic album, and one that I still have a lot of fun with whenever I put it on, which, admittedly, isn't too often anymore. So naturally, when I discovered that Los Exorcisto was not, in fact, the first White Zombie album, I was intrigued. I did the research, in other words, I looked on the Wikipedia page, and discovered that there are two White Zombie albums and a succession of EPs released over the course of the late 80s. Today we will be reviewing one of their two 1987 releases from the period where the band was in residency in New York playing alongside such bands as Sonic Youth, The Honeymoon Killers, and Swans. And as those bands would all attest, White Zombie in 1987 were very much a noise rock band. In fact, no less a connoisseur of late 80s noisiness than Kurt Cobain himself said that this EP was one of his favorite releases. White Zombie also put out a full-length album, Soul Crusher, during this year, but I think I'm gonna save that one for a little while later. So let's dive in to White Zombie as a noise rock band. The intro to this song is pretty misleading, throwing you off track and making you expect something very different from what you get only a few seconds later. When the song abruptly transitions into an energetic, sludgy freakout that continues for the next several minutes. The instrumentation is pretty solid here, although the vocals are a weak point. And sadly, that's going to be something that's fairly consistent throughout this entire EP. Fast Jungle is quite good as well. The band slow it down and do a much more bluesy song, which does drag a little bit, but also has some cool moments that I think harken towards the future of White Zombie. You be the judge. This song is very good. The drums, the bass, the guitar, all are top notch here. It's got an amazing frenetic energy and just so much going on. Which makes it that much more unfortunate that this track has the vocals at probably their most annoying on this EP. Although then again, this is supposed to be abrasive music, so maybe that's the idea? I don't know. Kick is easily my favorite song on this entire EP. From the intro with its great detuned 60s instrumental sound. To the rest of the song, which, like the last track, has so much happening and really shows what this lineup of White Zombie was capable of on an instrumental level. I mean, check out that guitar solo. Memphis is quite good as well, alternating heavy, dark riffs 
with some interesting fast bits, more incoherent screeching from Rob, an interesting breakdown moment that reminds me of Primus, even though they wouldn't be releasing their first album for a couple of years. And a cool little moment that almost, almost, almost reminds me of King Crimson. When I listen to this EP, this track is around where I tend to lose interest, although listening to it again for this review, I will say that it is multi-part and there are some interesting moments here. In fact, many of these songs are relatively intricate, at least by the standards of what this band would do later on. True Crime is one of the more simple songs on here, in fact it's probably the simplest song on here, and it's basically just a big, sludgy, dirty, bluesy riff all the way to the end of the EP. The lyrics are there, but you kinda zone them out, and you can't tell what Rob's saying anyway. This album is pretty good. I will say that I have a lot less of a background in this kind of music than I do with really any other genre. I, I'm struggling to think of another genre I would be less qualified to review at this point. Country my, Western. He's not wrong there. But as such, I don't really have a whole lot of ability to authoritatively compare this to other albums of the same era, and so I'm going to try to make my final thoughts here mostly stand alone. And what I will say is that first and foremost, I love a good two-thirds of the music here. I think this was possibly the best lineup of White Zombie. It's definitely a, definitely a tie between this and the Los Exorcista era band, but a lot of the good things about that era of the band can also be heard here. The rhythm section is really tight and just fantastic. The drumming is top notch, the bass is really, really good, and the guitar. Just the guitar on this EP is great. All kinds of weird atonal stuff, dissonant noise, just the instrumentation here is absolutely fantastic. The vocals are a bit of a problem though. As I said, because I haven't listened to a lot of noise music, I don't know if this is the norm. What I have heard over the years has had vocals that are much more toned down and much less shrill than these are. and. Rob, who wasn't calling himself Rob Zombie, I believe he was calling himself Rob Stryker at this point, is pretty annoying on a lot of songs on here. But as I said earlier, this is supposed to be abrasive music, so how much of that is by design is pretty hard to say. All in all, I highly recommend this EP to anybody who likes noise music, as well as anybody who just likes grungy, sludgy, late 80s heavy rock.